Chain Chomps are one of my favorite non-player characters in the Mario franchise. They're a giant, honestly adorable, and they're such a good original idea to me. My son has a plush Chain Chomp that he calls Chompy, and it's one of his favorites. I wanted to see how closely I can recreate a Chain Chomp in Game Builder Garage. I think in order to call this a success, we need to replicate their AI and behavior as well as their appearance. So namely, we'd like them to follow the player slowly and track their position, signal their attack and bark before lunging towards the player in an attack and kind of tugging on their chain at the end of that swing. The first thing we're going to do is start with the visual representation and basic setup. So I have some textures here on the right and we'll get to those in a minute. The base of our chain chomp is actually going to be the person node on. We'll set the frame of reference for motion as world since they'll be following the player and we'll lower that jump strength down to 0.1. A good size here is one where the X is 2.25. We'll want to make that person invisible. Next we're going to add a sphere. This is going to be the actual main body of the chain chomp. Have it as invisible so that the textures look smooth and we'll have a connection point of center center a good size would be 3.7 all around at this point we're going to duplicate that sphere twice so that we can have some additional spheres to add more textures on this original chain chomp body we're going to add all of the outward facing textures and all we're doing is changing the texture face that they appear on one for each side and a pure black panel that we'll use on the top bottom and rear We're going to connect that to a second sphere, and this one the size will be 2.8. This one is just to hold the red texture on the inside of the mouth so that we're not looking into the hollow sphere of the chomp body. This last sphere is just going to be for adding external effects like these little sweats that are bouncing off the character before he attacks just as an additional signal that the chomp is about to lunge forward. Then we might want to add an effect note on like the damage effect, set it to world at the end of the chomp's mouth. Now we want to alternate the mouth textures from open and sort of closed. We can have a constant into a timer to a counter from 0 to 2. So it's always switching between a value of 0 and 1 with a not node on being one texture and the regular output being another. We can copy the timer and counter setup so that our chomp also jumps occasionally. In this case, set that one to 0.5 seconds. Now we can build the cylindrical wooden post that holds the chomp chain. We'll make that non-destructive, non-movable, set it to brown with a size of X 1.6, Y 4.8, and the connection settings of Z negative, Z positive, and that's going to affect where the string connector gets attached. We'll add in a string connector connect the cylinder to the top port and the player to the bottom and set the string length to 10. This is how it looks so far with all of our visuals and basic setup and it's looking pretty good. Now we just need to add the AI and the brain. We're going to be using this marker node on. We'll have a constant running into a counter. The counter will be a range from 0 to 300. So the whole marker node on setup will run for 5 seconds that way because the counter counts up by one each frame and the game is running at 60 frames a second. Our map node on will take an input of 0 to 300 and output 0 to 1. Now the benefit of this setup for AI is that we can kind of customize where the bullseye node ons go on this timeline and then attach these to specific behaviors. So this first portion we can have for the chain chomp following you slowly and looking in your direction. Then when he stops doing that, we can add another bullseye for the bark signal, and then one at the end for the lunge or for when he chases you quickly. And the final bullseye here could be to reset this AI timer and to create that sound where he tugs on the chain. And we'll add this one to where the constant used to go in so that he stops jumping a little bit before he follows you. And now we're gonna create a simple AI follow, which is where you attach a location sensor to both the player and the AI agent. The Z and X locations get subtracted from each other and put into the person's left, right, and forward, backward. In this case, we're gonna run them through a multiply node on first. So we can change how quickly the chomp will follow the player at different points. 
we're going to have two more multiplication no dogs down here. One for a fast follow, which will have a constant of 3, and one for a slow follow with a constant of 0.1. We'll take that bullseye no dog output and multiply it by either fast or slow. And we'll run those into the second input of the multiply nodons. I fix this later on, but they should both go into both of the multiplication nodons. Now we can always fine tune this AI timeline by moving around the bullseyes and doing some testing. For the sound, we want two barks, that's usually what they do. So we can have the bullseye nodon play a sound and then cause a timer to go off to automatically play the second sound after 0.25 seconds. We'll make that last bullseye play the metal sound and also connect it to the reset on the counter so that it resets the AI timing. And this is our result so far. It looks pretty good. The following isn't perfect and that's because I hadn't yet connected those multiplication nodons properly. Now that that's done, the chain chomp will follow you slowly, take a little break to bark and indicate that he's about to lunge, and then he'll go after the player. And I think that between the jumping and the sounds, it looks pretty good. Let me know what you think.